fall and winter growth of roots. I mean, what's what's going on in the fall? The, leaves, the plants look like they're dying in the fall. Let's talk about a, an apple tree for an example, right? The plant looks like it's dying, but there's something happening in fall. And in the winter, it looks like it's just dead. Um, but there can also be something happening in the winter. So what's what's going on in a plant that appears dormant? Um, what's going on in the roots of a plant that is dormant? going into dormancy in fall and being dormant into winter. Okay, so the first thing to understand is uh, when do roots grow? And uh, I mean, plants will grow roots whenever they really need to, but for the most part, most root growth happens when it's cooler. So middle of summer, roots are mostly dormant. They're not doing a lot of growing. If you're in a really cold climate in the middle of winter in January, February, even the soil gets too cold and they're not growing either. But when we're looking at spring and fall, uh, we have cool temperatures above and we have cool temperatures in the soil, but they're not too cool. And that's when roots grow really well. So a plant, you know, July, August, roots aren't doing much. The top part may be flowering, growing, doing its thing. Roots are kind of dormant. Now we get into September, October, the temperature's coming down. That's when roots start to grow. And they like that cooler temperature. Right. And they will continue growing until the ground gets too cold, um, which is just a little bit above freezing usually. Right. But they grow much longer than we think. And that's one of the reasons why it's really important to water newly planted things right up until the ground freezes. Right. right. You don't stop in in end of August when when the, the temperatures are cooling down outside because the roots are still growing. They need that moisture. Right. Now, the top part of the plant, if we're looking at a deciduous woody tree, like uh, an apple tree, for instance, uh, the, kind of the opposite is, is going on there, right? It starts growing in spring. That's when it leafs out. It makes all these leaves. And by middle summer, it's, it's not visually growing anymore because the leaves are fully developed, right? The apples are on the tree. I mean, the apples may still be getting a little bigger and a little riper, but the tree doesn't seem to be doing very much at this point. But in fact, it is. And again, this will depend on the type of tree it is. But a lot of trees in July and August are developing next year's buds, right? right. So the leaves are photosynthesizing. They're taking those sugars. They're sending them down to the roots for next year. They're going through a hardening off process. So all the cells in the stems are slowly changing and getting harder and harder. Um, um, Right. Nutrients are being sucked out of the leaves. Now we're now maybe September, right? And that's why our leaves turn red and yellow in the fall. The green goes away because the plant is actually taking some of those nutrients out of the leaves and storing it in stems and roots. So there's a lot of things going on there. It's, there's a lot of chemical changes going on that we, we don't see, but it's getting ready for winter. Uh, it reduces the amount of moisture in the cells. Because if there's too much moisture in there and they freeze, they're going to crack, right? It, it increases the amount of sugar in the, each of the cells um, because the sugar acts like antifreeze. Right. So these cells don't freeze as easily as clean, pure water would. Right? Mm. So there's a lot of internal things going on, including the development of all these buds. And so it's really getting ready for next spring. It's, it goes through this process, July, August, September, which uh, really says, okay, let me get ready for spring. What do I have to do? How do I have to change to survive the winter? Right. right. And, and that's just when these, these roots start to really take off and, and grow. Right. And then middle of winter, January, most things are pretty dormant. Uh, so deciduous trees won't be doing much of anything but they're still active, metabolic, they still have metabolism going on. They're still breathing. They're still using up that energy to stay alive in the wintertime. So they're never 100% dormant. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's just more like in science fiction where the guy's in the glass jar and for the yeah. long space flight to the, you know, Alpha Centauri planet. And, you know, it's it, 10 years goes by and he's, 
he's ready to get in a fist fight the minute he comes out of the little tube. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I should ask you, I I moved uh, that very whip. So that very whip I decided this fall was in the wrong place. And I wanted to move it, move all my apple tree, move everything. I did a major reorganization of the garden. Viewers, I'm going to show you what's the situation. Uh, I've already filmed the video. I just got to edit it and put it up. Put up. Garden looks a lot different. Um, anyway, so I had this beautiful sweet 16 apple tree that I grew from a whip um, that was, you know, seven feet high now. It was two feet high a few years ago. Healthy, beautiful tree. Got apples this year. Great variety. So I had a buddy come over and we dug all the way. We basically went at about two feet from the from the base all the way around with a sharp shovel. And the two of us just grabbed it and ripped it right out of the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever wouldn't come out, we ugh, cut, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, and then we, we, you know, made a hole and dug it and packed it down really good and put it in another spot. Now, after I moved this, and I moved this one in mid late October. Okay. So all the maple trees, everything in the forest, but the whole forest was yellow and red. Everything's been changing, but my apple tree was still green. And I was worried that if I waited too long to move it, there wouldn't be good root development before the winter. And also the guy that was helping me, that's, that's the afternoon he, you know, that's when he yeah. could help me, right? I couldn't like, you know, if I waited two weeks, he might not be available. And I needed like a grown man. I needed someone reasonably strong to help me with this. Right. Um, so I just, he said, oh, I can help you today. And I was like, oh, you know, but then I read afterwards, you should really wait till the plants leaves have started to not necessarily fall on, but the very least they've lost their color and that sort of stuff. So I wonder, did I kill my, like how much damage did I, basically the, the, the leaves were green and I moved it and the leaves died. And to a large extent, the leaves are still on that tree dead. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm examining the buds because I don't know if I killed the, you know, I'll know next spring because the buds, well, actually I'll know pretty soon. You know, you can sort of tell by the state of buds if they're alive or dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do yeah. you think? It, it's, I, I think the tree will be fine. Okay. Um, so it is always, on deciduous plants, it's always better to wait until the leaves drop off. Uh, but I think you're far enough along in the season that it probably doesn't make a lot of difference. Right. Might um, have a crappy year next year. You, you know, you can, they're pretty resilient. And so if they lose a few weeks or a month of, of you know, green leaves, that's not going to bother it very much. Um, the one thing you can do with moving particularly larger trees is to actually cut the roots in the fall and then move them in the spring. What? That works very well. So uh, your, your tree now is like seven feet tall. So it has a root system that's going out into the soil, you know, seven feet in every direction. Not and anymore. <laughs> you cut a lot of those off. Yes. Right? So most of its roots are gone. So one of the things that works really well is that you come along and you figure out where your root ball is going to be. And you don't dig the whole root ball, but you, you dig, you, you take the spade and, and press it down in a few spots where the root ball is going to be. And so you cut like half the roots. So half of them are still long going out doing their thing, but the other half you've cut off. And then you leave the plant there all winter and wait till spring. So it starts regenerating new root tips near the center of the root ball. And then next year you come along and cut the other roots off. So now you have some, uh, you know, long roots that you cut off, but half the roots are short and they have new root tips already. Uh, They're ready to go. Short and bushy sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, I've tried that a number of times and that really works quite well. Oh. Right. Now the other common advice that you get, which is wrong, is that you've cut a whole bunch of roots off. So now the root ball is small, the top part's still big. You should cut the top part off to kind of mirror the bottom part. Right. right. And that's advice that used to be around a lot and is still around quite a bit. You should never do that. Really? You know, dig it up, move it, 
the plant will figure out if it's got too much top growth right. and it will lose some of it. So in your case, what it said was, geez, I, I just lost all my roots. I can't support these green leaves because the roots have to provide water and nutrients for these leaves to work. So it said, okay, well, let's get rid of the leaves and they turn brown, right? So the plant is able to figure that out. If it needs to, a few of the branches may die back, right? What's and the, the plant will abort those if it needs to. Let the plant make that decision instead of you as a gardener saying, oh, I think I'll cut one third off and, and balance the root size. What's the risk of cutting it off? You cut off the wrong part. Like there's a, there was a better, there was a better branch to sacrifice that the plant could have determined to the, sacrifice or the, the, the risk the is that you don't need to cut any off. It will just be fine anyways. Oh, <laughs> right? so you've cut this thing back, even though it doesn't need to be cut back. The other thing that I think I never realized, and actually until I read the book, I think, or a few years before I wrote the book, um, is that we, we talk about these plants taking all its energy and sugars and sending them down to the roots for the winter, but that's not actually what happens. Some is sent down there, but an awful lot of that is stored in the woody parts that are above ground. Mm. All those stems and trunks and everything, they're full of sugars. Right? Almost like our beer belly. And, <laughs> yeah, like a beer belly, right? Yes. So every time you cut one of those branches off, you're actually taking resources, food away from the plant. Resources. Right? So the recommendation now is just leave the top part and let the plant decide on what it needs to do, and, and they'll figure it out as they go along. Huh. Hey, folks, want to help support everything I'm doing here? Check out my sponsors, Vessi's Seeds and Safer's Gardening Products. For Vessi's, go to their website, Vessi's.com. Use my coupon code GAVS23 and you'll get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in your order and there's no oversized items in your order. Check out the description box of this video for details. Uh, for Safer's products, Woodstream products, you can buy all the things I use in my garden, Slug and Snail, Killer, BTK, and all. You can buy that from Vessi's or you can go to their websites uh, for a much wider range of products to solve just about any kind of problem that you can imagine. Uh, with high quality natural ingredients like oils from seeds and flowers and stuff like that. Uh, for, if, you, if you're in Canada, go to woodstreambrands.ca and as long as your order is over $69, you get free shipping. If you're in the United States of America, then go to saferbrand.com and as long as your order is over $45 US, you'll get free shipping from them. So yeah, if you want to help support the channel and the podcast and they sell something you need, Buy from them, and that'll help support everything I'm doing here. Thanks a lot.